board meeting, uh, September 13th, 7 p.m. I need a motion to call the meeting to order. I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Slip the flag, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have a moment of silence for the military that are serving around the world and the unfortunate ones that didn't make it home. Here. Councilwoman Doyle? Here. And Supervisor Flood? Here. Uh, first thing is public comments. Who's first? I'm Pat Nelligan. I'm at 4825 through 22, just off Broadway. I'm here to talk about the letter that went out this week on the wastewater situation. Finally, the uh, committee and the town board have decided to actually include the residents of the town of Amenia in any kind of survey or fact finding or comments they might want to have about pursuing a wastewater system on our own since two years ago, the one with Silo Ridge, which we couldn't afford then, fell apart. But magically, and it may be a tribute to Billy Flood, that magically, when he was elected, uh, the wastewater issue came alive again. And we started to look into alternative proposals and ideas. Uh, I think partly based on Billy's experience with Cozy Corner and with this company he was working with. That's a positive. I'm not being all negative here, guys. <laughs> I think you did a good job. Uh, my problem is uh, that based on the size of the district, and you're having a meeting on the 24th, finally, with the people who are going to be affected. Most of them are in shock when they got the letter today. I've been around know really what was going on um, they can't afford any increase in their taxes whatever or service fees or whatever whether it's five hundred dollars thousand two thousand three thousand doesn't even matter you can't afford anything we're in a depression uh, and I know it's not called that it's not polite to call it a depression because we have an election coming up and neither of well Romney would like to call it a depression but Never mind. Um, I think the way you handled it was absolutely outrageous. Not one piece of information was ever sent out to the town. Not one survey was ever done of the people that might be affected, whether they were going to be or not. Nothing from the wastewater committee or you guys. And now all of a sudden, because the county, Ed from the county, Water and Wastewater Authority said, look, you guys can't do this without community support. Now you're going to have a meeting and tell everybody what you already decided to do on July 29th or July 19th. You got a resolution ready that night to approve this wastewater district for the people affected without one of them, except you and you and you knowing about it. Not one of them knew about it on July 19th. You slid it under the pile because Ed told you that without community support, you couldn't do this. You also found out that night that you weren't going to be able to get your 0% interest rate loan for this project. And Ed stated very clearly there were no additional grant funds available. This town cannot afford did I just? Oh. Hi, this town can't afford 
for the residential people on Broadway, West Main Street, East Main Street, Mechanic Street, to support a few commercial people or people who want to see property values increased. Well, Pat, I think- uh, Billy, I didn't ask you to talk, I'm commenting. I didn't well, ask a question. The people can't afford any increase in their costs right now. I talked to two people tonight. The two of them are just on Social Security. They don't know if they're going to be able to keep their house. I'm sorry, you guys, this is absurd in a depression. Thank I'll you. be there on the 24th. I I'm promise. sure you will. Oh, I have one other problem. I asked for the initial feasibility study that was submitted by the engineer, Clark Engineers. I asked for it in a foil, but I was told by the controlling <sighs> has to have absolute power chairman of the wastewater committee that that wasn't available because it was a draft or working document. We paid $20,000 for this damn study. Before it got politicized, favoritized, manipulated, we should see the initial draft at the 24th meeting. Thank you. It's all public record. It's available. Uh, Cheryl Moore. <clears throat> Good evening, Cheryl Morse, P.O. Box 645, Amenia. Um, I'm here for a couple of reasons tonight. Um, to add to Pat's comment um, with regard to the wastewater documents, um, as many of you know, I worked at the Department of State, so I'm familiar with the law, and when someone even requests a draft based under the laws, even drafts are open for any citizen who files a FOIL request. So it would be nice when people ask for documents with transparency that those documents be provided. Um, it sets a very bad tone when people are refused documents that they request from a municipal body. Secondly, um, I have a list of questions here regarding um, the transfer station and privatization. Um, privatization of municipal services always costs taxpayers more money. Contractors are for-profit entities and as such, fees always increase over time. So I don't see really in the long term how the taxpayers will save money. I realize generally only a small group of people maybe use this service, but um, in the past, municipalities have provided trash pickup to people. People do pay a fee, they pay for the permit. And I question why the board doesn't look at other options that might actually make it a profitable enterprise. If we looked at the model of the Sharon Salisbury transfer station and offered maybe intermunicipal services to other communities who would like to maybe share the expense and have the option of having some place to take things to be used, I think the town could realize a profit from doing something like that. And as um, grant money that comes available um, encourages communities to provide intermunicipal services, I think it's something worth looking into before the board makes an arbitrary decision because it will affect taxpayers. Um, in the event that people don't want to pay um, fees to go to another location or whatever, you're going to find, and, and it exists now, illegal dumping. The highway department, I believe, becomes responsible to pick up the stuff that's dumped alongside of the road, or the town also depends upon volunteers to walk along the roadways and clean up the trash that's dumped as people travel through town or residents who are too lazy to pay for some kind of service or to take it to the transfer station drop things off. A couple weeks ago I saw a mattress dumped at the Anderson Patch Road. You know, I don't see anybody but the town having to pick up that cost. And ultimately when refuse is illegally dumped, the taxpayers are going to end up paying for that service. So I have a list of questions here. Um, that I'd like to submit. I'm requesting written answers to these questions. 
um, I read the articles in the paper that were submitted and I was disappointed to see that a comment was made about the transfer station not being compliant with the zoning when it was grandfathered in. And um, I think that it was an ill-advised comment to state publicly in the paper that the um, transfer station was not in compliance when um, the town attorney actually contradicted that statement by stating that the transfer station is grandfathered in. Also, once the town gives up the DEC permit, I believe that the permit would not be renewed. Um, I had a conversation. don't have a permit. Well, you're still grandfathered in. You've been operating it. Um, they haven't come to shut you down that I see. I haven't seen anything, haven't heard anything. Um, I also happen to have an occasion to have a conversation with the property owner of the site one day. He would like to donate land to the town to use to put up a salt shed, a new highway garage, and even over time construct a building that could be used as, say, a swap shop where people could bring things in that they didn't want, building materials, whatever, items that could be recycled and reused. And in a time when people are encouraging us to become more green, I think it would be a smart move to at least look into these strategies before making this decision. It would certainly be good politics, and I think people would feel a lot better about the decision that's ultimately made if other strategies were explored. And at the very least, the fact that the individual who owns the site where the transfer station now exists is willing to sit down at the table, negotiate a lease, and work out a plan would be a smart idea. So I respectfully submit this list. Um, I know you only had one bidder. Um, I'm a little disappointed at that because um, I've worked in situations where we've had to get bids um, in the past. And generally, a small town publication like the Millerton News isn't widely read, but there are a lot of other refuse contractors that could have, be re could have been reached and offered a bidding even by mailing. There may be not wide enough circulation to other contractors who would have been notified so that they would have an opportunity to bid. So I think the fact that only one bid was received, I think it should be rebid and maybe direct mailing sent out to <laughs> other contractors to look at it and see if maybe somebody would come in a little more competitively or whatever if, you know, such a decision is made. The other thing that I was concerned about is perhaps it should be put to the voters because I'm wondering what kind of tax savings would be realized by the taxpayers if this service isn't available in the town anymore. And if they're not going to somehow benefit, then maybe it's not such a good idea. So I, I think that in moving to do this, it's a little premature and it should be explored further. And like I said, I would like an answer in re return, in writing of the questions that I pose. I'm going to submit it to the newspapers and see if they'll publish it as well. Um, I understand that some of the revenue that the town generates is used to pay debts. Um, certainly the town receives income from scrap metal recycling and such. And I think that in the future it might not be a bad idea for the town to still operate the facility but open it up and allow staffing by other towns if there is an intermunicipal situation that is created from doing so. So I respectfully submit this and I look forward to your answer. Just to uh, clarify, the, the town doesn't have a permit uh, because it doesn't need a permit to operate the transfer station. It operates legally as a registered transfer station. So we have registration You're through registered. the DEC. Correct. Correct. And just to answer a couple of your questions, we as a community in Dutchess County cannot enter into an agreement to move refuge from one state to the next state. 
Dutchess County reference. I wasn't suggesting from one state to the well, next. I'm Salisbury's in local. Connecticut. Yeah, no, I'm saying it's look at them as a, as a model because they've been operating for a lot of years and I used to use that transfer station That's right. when I resided in Connecticut. I'm talking and I specified in my letters um, the town of Northeast, Pine Plains, Millbrook, and um, the village of Millerton, as well as what's the other one? Uh, Pine Plains, because they've all closed their transfer stations and they would love to have some place to share. They didn't enter an agreement with Lakeville. They're, Lakeville's building a multi-million dollar facility. But Lakeville's on the in Connecticut and you can't take it over the state line. That's right. Millerton was offered to and they won't, they won't join. But that's because it has to go over right. state lines. We're in the same state. In Correct. The same I've state. I had a conversation with Millerton. They're not interested. Well, that's not what I've heard, so maybe we can look at it a little further. Okay. Yes? Um, Sharon Kroger. Yep. Um, <clears throat> about the transfer station. Several weeks ago, I spoke with you and, and made a suggestion that you might want to have a committee that looks into some of the variables because there were so many variables. It's not just a simple, are you going to be private or are you going to be public and, uh, and there's a one-size-fits-all contract. Uh, different towns have um, negotiated different kinds of contracts and so that committee might want to review those in order to see some different ways of doing it. But that was prior. Sunday, in the Sunday paper, maybe some of you saw it, the Poughkeepsie Journal had an article, had a lot of articles in dealing with the environment, but it dealt with uh, recycling. And it, it uh, tells us that the county planning has designated a staff person who is working on uh, solid waste coordinating and is a resource person that towns can refer to if they want to get more information or find out what other things are taking place or options. And I believe they're working on a countywide plan. It's nowhere as near uh, finished, but um, I think that the fact that that type of activity is ongoing might, again, give you uh, an idea that if you had a committee working on this, they'd learn a lot, perhaps more than you already know and it might make it easier to make systematic uh, decision making afterwards rather than arbitrary. Thank you. Thank you. James. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Well, every once in a while somebody does mess up and call me James, especially my wife. Uh, tonight I'm here especially for the uh, transfer station. Uh, we have some turned in. Uh, you people should have each gotten a copy of the signatures that I've collected. Some 180 total. Uh, and I think uh, just to, to uh, give you an idea of what I've done for the transfer station, not to blow my own horn, but like Sharon said, there's more that can be done. I've gotten the papers we now get paid for. We never did before. I have been out putting feelers out to get our co-mingles picked up and paid for. The what? The co-mingles, the glass, the plastic, tin cans. I've been across the river to Baylor Contracting, which uh, is a uh, collection site on the other side of the river. And they are somewhat interested in what we have to offer them. And I, if this doesn't uh, go too far, as my job site, I guess, would say, uh, I'd like to meet with them. I'd get your approval, of course, to, to meet with them and show them what we have. I've had people as far away as New York City that are visitors come with some of our clients. And the remarks, We've never seen cleaner commingles. We keep our plastic bags out of it. Everything is, is uh, sortable, clean. And they were just amazed that it could be done so easily. Uh, our metal is something that we increased our sales on. Uh, I give the town approximately uh, between two and $3,000 a year on on metal alone 
It goes down to Wingdale to uh, Southeast uh, Yard to be reclaimed. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I uh, have other ideas that we could make money on. And one of them I've been trying since back when Uvard was here, we tried to bring Millerton under us because I've had numerous people. Of course, the state school was open. They would come by and say, gee, we could t bring our garbage on the way to work. And I understand the law states the only thing we have to do is form a committee to oversee it, and it, which is comprised of people from both towns. They make up a committee, much as you would your wastewater committee or any of those, and uh, oversee it so that everything is done. And we would definitely our metal and all that would, would definitely increase. I've also gotten, we have a company here in Amenia, a book company, a publishing company, and I pick up all their paper. I'm bringing in there about 400 pounds a week of clean paper, all boxed and ready, ready to be recycled. Uh, I did this on my own because I mean, I just can't see it being thrown in the garbage anymore. I'd like to see our town offices do the same thing. Rebox your paper. You're not going to go through two or three, five reams a day, but you'll be surprised how much money that brings in when you're, you know, recycling it. Uh, yeah, let's see where. I don't know how many transfer stations we have in uh, Dutchess County. I know there aren't many because Royal has run them out. And it'd be nice, Bill, if you'd listen instead of run through your papers and your telephone. Thank you. I'm listening. Yeah, half, half there. But anyway, uh, to get back where I was, we don't have many transfer stations alive anymore. And again, like she was saying there before, if we could bring them together under a countywide pickup system or collection system it'd make it a lot easier for on everybody and we could I think charging we could actually come out ahead on a deal uh, I think it'd be Bill's or somebody's job there go to Royal and find out why we can't get a better deal I mean they're the only monopoly we have in in uh, Dutchess County and now we're going to turn turn over our transfer station to them again as did Ryan Beck, Red Hook, and those people. The money looks good when it starts out, but after the, your moratorium, the sky's the limit. Your, old, your older people can't handle those containers they have, and the, the trucks will not back up to their yard to get the garbage. So wh where is that going to leave them? Out in the cold. They can't afford Welch's rates even. So, I mean, you're, you're shoving our, our senior citizens another bone they can't digest and I don't think it's fair one of these days you guys are going to be antiques or whatever you want to call yourselves senior citizens whatever but uh, you know as we get older we we have to slow down we have to realize that the senior citizens here have been here for 40 50 60 years and I think it's time they got a little recognition and get breaks and don't be don't be stubborn about you know what the whole process is. Has anybody gone over to signatures in the petition that I sent? Yes. Other than throw it on throw it on the desk and mm -hmm. under the desk. It's here. It's here. I hope so because there's a lot of signatures there and a lot of people that are highly aggravated, and it's not just the ones that are using this facility. Do we have 180 people? Oh yes, we do. We have 300 and some. With permits, and with permits and everything. I also contacted. I put the petition out for public viewing at a couple different places for non-users, and I was surprised at the response I got out of that. I still get a, a, a surprise when I see somebody come in and they say, "Gee, we didn't know you were here." I think maybe we should, somebody should look into advertising that a little bit and let people know what's there. Because right now, there's there's a lot of people here, new people in the, in the town, 
never knew we existed. We're stuck down there in the back road and just just keep picking up garbage. And it being, Bill, you were staying, staying at, uh, I was $20,000 in the hole. I think that's a, a cheap getaway, considering the alternative if once the two years is up, Royal's going to make that back in a very short well, time. Well, you're telling people on truth, Jimmy, because it gets rebid in two years. So that's exactly the way it happens. That wasn't, All the towns are doing the same thing. That wasn't stated that it was rebid well, in two you, years. I before. Then, it's done every two years. That's It gets rebid. The senior citizens will pay substantially less than what they're paying today. I doubt it. I'm doing... Well, you doubt it. I'm tell, we'll tell you what the figures are here. That's in good because... Uh, but I'm not going to argue with you. Though. Well, we won't, we won't we won't argue, Bill, but... The thing is never, ever made a profit. It's a service. It isn't right. supposed to make make the profit. Money, I don't think the taxpayers in the town of Amenia need to lose a dollar on anything. And that's what I'm, I'm after. That's right. Well, you should you should be looking out for the the residents and never mind your pocketbook. I'm not looking at my pocketbook. Oh, oh yes, you are. The town taxpayer's pocketbook. Yes, I am. Yeah. Absolutely. On the wrong That's side. On the wrong side of the dollar bill, Bill. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. You'll see in November. That's right. Two years. Anyone else? Can you go to the podium, please? please. No, it's just the agenda of the old one. There's your current agenda. Should be. There aren't any other. Who's next? Mike? Thank you, Mike. It's Michael Peake. I'm a member of the Conservation Advisory Council here in town, although I'm not speaking tonight in that capacity, just as a citizen who cares. Um, and I'm not going to get into whether or not uh, the, the town should operate the transfer station or what should be done. Uh, and I'm not going to get into the legalities of things. I think uh, our lawyer, I think he can address that. Um, my point is just that even if we are in compliance because we are exempt um, via, from our code, should we really be operating a solid waste management facility on top of the primary valley bottom aquifer here. To me, that makes no sense. So um, I think this is something that the town uh, board understands, and I think that's why they're looking for other options. Um, I think really it's as simple as that. I, I think there have been a number of other very good ideas brought up tonight. I'm sure these guys, well, I hope these guys will consider all of them. But I mean, from my perspective, I, I you know, as, as a town resident, I don't see how we can how we can continue to operate a facility like that at that location. I mean, look across the street at what's happening on the other side of 22, right? I mean, isn't that enough to tell us that maybe we shouldn't be doing it this way? Um, anyhow, so I just wanted to raise that point, which I feel is very important. I wanted to thank the board for the work they've done so far, and I'm, I'm sure they'll consider a lot of the good ideas that have been, uh, that have been raised tonight. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Moira Kelly. I'm a, a, a resident of Armenia, um, and I would just like to speak out in favor of the continuation of the transfer station. Um, on a strange level, um, not just because it's the most affordable um, uh, way of disposing of one's waste, I simply could not afford to use the other service that's available and have never been able to afford it in all the 12, 13 years I've lived here. I think one of the most important aspects of the transfer station is it's a center for the community. It's where people meet and greet. And there are a considerable number of people who go there and go there as a social means to meet other people. Um, and I think this community, uh, I think all communities, but I think this community in particular lacks those social, socially oriented places and activities. So, strange though it may seem, I would uphold uh, the, the transfer station on the basis of, of, of that. Thank you.
We'll get to you in a second. Before I go home, just on the transfer station, which I hadn't actually thought about speaking about, is moving the transfer station part of a plan to eliminate the actual illegal wastewater man or waste management facility that's being operated on the property? If not, don't move it. If you have a plan to eliminate the compost operation that is illegal under our zoning law, was not grandfathered, then you'd be setting a precedent that, hey, look, we're doing the right thing. We're going to make you do the right thing. Shut down your waste management operation. Is that part of the plan, guys? Part of it. Is it? We're going to be in compliance. You're going to be in compliance. Is, is the operator of the waste management facility going to be made to stop or come into compliance? Is that part of the plan, or are you just doing politics here? It's part of the plan. Have you made any moves to eliminate his operation? Have we at this point? Yeah. And after, if you move the transfer station, will you tell the public that you will then make them come into compliance and leave? Or go back to a sand and gravel operation? I doubt it. I guess you're not going to answer, but we'll see. Who's next? Anybody else? We have the bids. Has we haven't opened the public hearing yet. Did this lady want to speak? I think this lady wanted to speak. Oh. Doris Higgins, Bog Hollow Road, West Lake, New York. Um, I don't understand why the transfer station has to move because no garbage goes into the ground. It all goes in the dumpsters. So what is the problem with, with that? If it's the compost you're worried about, you could shut down the compost, but I don't see the problem with the dumpsters. Everything in the dumpsters is recycled. And I wanted to know if when you shut if you're going to shut down the dump, what it's going to cost the individual when, when it is closed down. I mean, I live on a one check a month. If it's going to cost, I mean, my friend who uses Walsh transfer got a bill for $71. There's no way I'm going to pay $71. We're not giving, we're not closing, we're not closing the, the transfer station. We're going to privatize this in. The, uh, well, who's going to buy it? Who's going to take over? There is one, one bid will be tonight. Yeah. And that's Royal Cardi. And what are they going to charge us? It's the same fees you're paying today. It's actually going to be less in, in some instances. But we'll see, we'll read the bids here in a few minutes. Okay. But we're still going to pay once a year? And it's not going to go up, or it, it's because usually no when guarantee. you get a monopoly, there's no, on, it, there's no guarantee. Nothing's that it's guaranteed. Going up. That, you know, it's, it's the same price for two years. Then it's re it's it's rebid in two years. But when you get a monopoly on something where every one person owns everything, well, what's to stop them from raising it? You know, that's what I want to know. <laughs> there's nothing to stop them from raising it. I know. That's why I figured it out for myself. And I know I Well, if the well. town negotiates a contract with them, they should be fine, I would think. It would be pursuant to a contract. Right. When the contract is up, you would have to rebid the contract. You'd have to advertise for bids again. There's another comment. I, I have a copy of it. Is that what you're aware Hi, 
I'm sorry, I got in here late. Deborah Thomas, I got in here late from work. I just had a question. Are there financials available that people can see about the bids and how much it costs now and comparisons and stuff? Oh, okay. But they haven't been handed out or anything? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, highway report, Stan Collies won't, he will not be here. Yeah. Town yeah. clerk's report? Nothing. Nothing? No. Uh, discussions, transfer, station, accept, or? You want this? Okay, we have one. We received one bid. I'll read. The, I'll read the legal notice. Legal notice to bidders. Please take notice to the town board of Armenian town. The, the town of Armenian town board, Dutchess County, New York, will be accepting separate sealed bids on forms contained within the bid specifications available to the town clerk for the operation and maintenance of the town Armenian transfer station at the facility owned and operated by the contractor and located in the town of Armenia. Bids will be received by the town of Armenia at the Town Hall located at 4988 Route 22, P.O. Box 126, Amina, New York, until uh, t September 4, 2012, 11 a.m. At, what time, at which time they will be publicly opened and read aloud. The bid specifications and bid form may be attained from the Town Clerk, 4988 Route 22, P.O. Box 126, Amina, New York. Submitted bids will shall be in sealed envelopes and clearly marked Amina's transfer station with bid opening date a name of contractor on the envelope and owner's right to reserve the town of Armenia hereon called the owner reserves the right to reject any or all bids or waive any formality or technology technicality in any bid in the interest of the town. Statement of non-collusion bidders on the contracts are required to execute a non-collusion bidding certificate pursuant to section 103-D of the general municipal law of the state of New York by the town board, Patty Barron Town Court. Uh, we received a bid September 4th, Town of Armenia, uh, attention, uh, it just has more bonds. We bid Operation Maintenance of Media Transfer Station. Uh, enclosed is a completed bid form with addendum and non collusive bidding certificate submitted in support of our proposal to operate and maintain the Town of Armenia Transfer Station. Please note that the transfer station as uh, the Town of Armenia as owner has a responsibility responsibility to register this facility to submit the annual report required by the DEC. The contractor will prepare this annual report, however, it will need to be, to be signed by the registered owner of the facility, that is, an authorized representative from the Town of Armenia. Once signed, the contract shall, as required under bid specifications, submit on behalf of the town, report to the DEC, you and you or the town attorney should feel free to communicate with me if there are any questions or comments concerning this aspect of your proposal. Also, we acknowledge and understand that in the event well sanitation is, is awarded the contract for this service, the contractor will be required to submit additional information, including a certificate of liability insurance and performance bond, also to sign an agree and to sign an agreement. Please know that we sincerely appreciate the opportunity to submit this proposal and are available to respond to any additional questions or comments or provide any further information the town requires in support of our bid. Uh, thank you for your courtesy. Very truly yours, James Constantino, General Consul. Um, the annual, I guess, the following are the proposed fees to be collected by the contractor from users of facility for the period of October 1, 2012 to September 30, 2014. Annual permit per user. Um, NA for six months. NA for six months senior citizens. Ten dollars annual. Five dollars annual for a senior citizen. Regular household trash. Four dollars per bag. Recyclable uh, items. Zero. Small bulk trash. Small appliances. Five dollars. Large appliance, $20. Mattresses, $5 for a twin, $10 for a double or larger. Per car load, $25. Per pickup van or SUV, $70. Per contractor, pickup truck, $90. E-waste, zero. 
contractor shall not collect from users of the facility or store at the facility any tires, hazardous materials, and or paint cans, leaves, or brush. The bid form is subject to the terms and conditions set forth in the annex addendum by this reference. Which references is incorporated into and made part of this bid proposal. Um, operation maintenance and immediate transfer station. The bid is subject to the following terms and conditions. The town will that the town secure appropriate registration facility with the state of New York, State Department of Environmental Conservation. At paragraph three of the bid specifications, operation of the town transfer station related to days of operation shall be modified to exclude federal holidays. At paragraph 13 of the bid specifications, trash hauling related to regular household trash collection shall be modified to require that only a closed compact refuge collection vehicle shall be used for uh, municipal solid waste disposal disposed of at the transfer station. Four, at paragraph 16 of the bid specifications, trash hauling relating to the description of materials to be disposed of at the transfer station shall be modified to designate the e-waste or electronic waste shall be collected separately and disposed of as recyclable e-waste. A, a list of accept, acceptable e-waste items is attached to and incorporated in this bid form. There will be no fees <coughs> imposed for e-waste disposal. The bid form has been amended to reflect there will be a separate and additional $20 free fee for Freon containing appliances or appliances that do not have the required documentation of Freon has been properly and fully removed and then in, in number seven and that the terms and conditions of the, uh, for the operation transfer station shall be set forth in a written agreement entered into the parties um, should be acceptable e-waste items televisions monitors computers keyboards and mice small-scale servers fax machines scanners printers vcr dvr dvd players portable digital music boxes digital conver converter boxes cable or satellite receivers, electronic or video consoles, and cell phones. I think to answer some of the some of the questions that were raised, we're not looking to um, close the facility. We're going to privatize the facility. It obviously saves us a lot of money. Um, most towns are doing it. Uh, I talked to the DEC the other day. The, uh, most towns within Dutchess County and the state of New York can have facilities run by private carters because they're in the refuge business. In uh, the articles that were in the Poughkeepsie Journal, I read also that 80% of the recycled products picked up in Dutchess County are picked up by carters. Um, so I don't think that we're doing anything that's out of the ordinary, and it's also cheaper for the town. That, that's what we're looking at to save some money. It said that the town has to have registration, the DEC? We do have it. But if we're not going to be running it, why does the town need registration? Because uh, it would still be operated as the town transfer station. Um, municipal transfer stations can be operated uh, pursuant to just a registration with DEC. It's not required that you have a permit. So private operators um, would need a permit, which is a more involved and expensive process through DDC. But if it's truly privatized, why would the town need a registration with DDC? Well, again, it's still going to be operated as the town transfer station. It, it'll be pursuant to a license agreement with the contractor, but the town is um, you're still going to have the obligation to submit reports to DEC. I think it's an annual report that has to be submitted. Um, you know, it's going to be available to residents of the town of Amina and, and who purchased the permits, not anybody else. It's so not going to be open to the public. Okay, but there's still be a cost to the town then? No, there's there's no but cost. But we have to hold the registration. You have to hold the registration. There, there'll have to be an amendment to the registration. There may be some fee involved with that. I'm not sure, but that would be a Which actually thing. gives us control over the transfer station. So at this point, with, with the pricing, as we move forward, we control the license. The town board would, would control it. So when they rebid it, 
we can keep the prices within reason. When you correct, you right. you still have to rebid it. Right. Um, but the registration doesn't necessarily guarantee us the right to dictate what the prices will be to them. That's correct. Um, the prices would be determined by the bids if you if you but not by the registration. It. So we would have the town would have the registration with DEC, but we would have other than it being rebid every two years, we would have no say on the pricing. Is that correct? Price. Well, you, we spoke about this before. Under general municipal law, you can, you're permitted to award these contracts to, um, uh, to a contractor to operate a transfer facility. Right. You can do it either by, you're not required to bid it. You can do it either by uh, request for proposal uh, procedure, which is outlined in the statute, or you can, uh, where practical, advertise for bids, and the town chose to advertise for bids. Um, and I recommended that because it was a simpler way to do it. Um, the request for proposal process under the, under that provision, uh, 120W, the general municipal law, is a more involved process than just circulating a request for proposal. Um, there's specific requirements. It requires public hearing, um, depending on how, uh, you know, uh, in certain circumstances you have to have a public hearing. It's just a, but it not takes just, a longer but not period of time. Okay, so we went the short way by doing the bidding. Correct. Instead Simple. of having the public hearing. Well, so that's not proposals. that's not the only requirement. You you would have to submit a request for proposals. So you're permitted to do it this way. There's nothing inappropriate about it. Now the um, license agreement with contractor that um, there would be uh, there would be a fee involved there also. No, there, there's, there's no. So that's fee. just. So the license agreement is just a, a contract. Correct. It's okay. a way to memorialize the, the agreement between the contractor and the town. And they are required to give us an annual report, of, since it's still under the town of Amina. I believe that's in the bid specifications that they have to provide a, an annual report, mm -hmm. and. They did the report for last year for the town. Okay. So that was done by Welsh. And I, I believe, I'm not certain that the town's required to, you probably know this, to, to submit an annual report to DEC. I believe that's we did. the purpose of the report. Uh, it, gets, it gets submitted to DEC. So the, the town, you know, the, the, as far as the pricing goes, You've got these bids. This would be, if you were to award it, it would be a two-year contract. The bid specifications called for a two-year contract. So these prices that were submitted by Welsh are going to be in effect for two years. At the end of that period, it's then up to the town board what to do. And you could um, either, you know, advertise for bids for another contract for you know, whatever period you wanted, you can't exceed five years. Um, but it doesn't roll over. This contract does not roll over. That was okay. not called for in the bid specification. So at the end of the two-year period, it's going to be up to the town board where, where to go and whether you, um, you, if you want to contract this out to a contractor, you're either going to have to rebid it or submit a request for proposals according to the procedure contained in uh, Section 120W of the General Municipal Law. Or you could operate it yourself as you're doing now. I mean, that's, you don't have to uh, contract this out. But you do have some control over the, the pricing in the sense that... Um, you control it from Well. That doesn't have to do with the pricing, though. No. Um, but you either advertise for bids or 
solicit for proposals or operate it yourself. Um, so this contract is only good for two years? Correct. But it's, it still operates the same way as far as people bringing their bags yep. to the transfer station. As I understand it, it's going to be open more frequently. It doesn't have to be just a Saturday Correct. or a Monday or a Friday. <coughs> so it's more often you're taking your bag of refuse to, this, to a different place for the same price, except the annual fee is less. It's $10 a year for anyone what under 65 or I don't know what the age of it is and yeah, then normal residents and then, and then senior citizens it's five dollars a year so it's actually it costs less what do we pay now 60 yeah. yes 60. we pay a lot more annual fee before you get your tickets before you get your bag tickets so there will, there will it costs be no more less. tickets at the town hall you'll just take it all there and they're going to yeah. honor whatever tickets you have yeah they will honor the tickets until we're out of the tickets uh, through Route 343 at the Welsh site. That was one of the reasons. Next it's, to it's page. Still next to page. Next to page. Lumber. Across from the yeah. Beekman Park. Are you going to change, make changes to their situation up there? We've got one way in, one way out. I haven't talked to them about that at this point. Mm -hmm. And also, would they allow an opportunity for people to, you know, Recycling, reuse articles that might be perfectly good. To I would assume on. I've had that conversation, but I would assume yes. Could you know, they, they, they run a, they run a lot of facilities in the right. Dutchess County. But could you look into that as, as an option yep. for people locally? Because I know myself, I've picked up building materials and other things that have been left at our transfer station that are perfectly usable, and I know other people would like to have the same opportunity to continue doing something like that. And the, the also, also, there was an issue about brush pickup, too, that they would not um, pick up or, or take brush and that sort of thing. So what happens to the green waste that residents have? That would be another issue, I think, that the town board should look into. Right now, there, anybody in the town can bring it down to our facility. And Romax puts in trailers all of the Hudson <coughs> to be ground up and reprocessed. No charge to the customer or to the town. Well, I think it's, you know, just the cost savings for these two years, you know, we can always revisit it. But we're saving, I mean, we're, we've lost 20000 a year, every year for I don't know how many years. So we're saving for the next two years at least $40,000. It's costing less per person to buy the permit to uh, bring their bags there and you're physically taking your bag, nothing is changing, no one is coming to your house to pick up a container, you're not paying a Welch's fee, for example. So it's handled pretty much the same way as what we have now, except it would be more frequent. Um, if you're away on a weekend, a long weekend, you still so are able- So instead of tickets, they'll bring cash? Yep, they'll take cash there. Is that, I don't know how, what the dynamics are. Yeah, I, from what I'm, I'm I think being told we need is, to know. what's that? I think they need well, to they know. will have a yeah. person, people there that will run it on a daily basis, and then they will they will handle the money, the cash. You know, the town. Yeah. Has okay. the yeah. 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 It would be their staffing. We don't have to staff it. And also, I mean, certainly if you're if you're using cash. You know, you would get a receipt because you would certainly need to <coughs> verify that you are from the town of Amenia, Wasaic, or the area of Dover. Do to you, have to have cash? You, could check. you could use a check. I'm sure. sure. It's it's just that, you know, some people like to use cash. I don't know. But do we know the hours of operation for everybody? It's in there. It's like Monday through Saturday. The hours it's are dead. in the bed. The hours are yeah. in the bed. I think Monday through Friday. Um, it's not on the picture, it is in the specifications. Um, so Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. So it'll be open every day except Sunday. What is that Monday through Friday? From Monday through Friday, um, 9 to 2. 
9 to 2, Saturday, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, but as the addendum to the bid submitted by Welsh, that ex excludes federal holidays. At the, the Welsh facility on, uh, I think it's town room 44, 44, actually. Yes. Yes. Everything will go there, or do we have to go to two different places? No, everything will go there. One place. One, One place, place for One everything. Staff. And the staff, they're staffing it. We don't pay for their staffing. They're already there. So it's in place. Hmm? Well, the, the registration has to be amended and uh, approved by DEC, so... Um, well, this, this board would have to vote to approve that action first, and then there are following steps. So, what, what would be, the, if the board were to approve this tonight, what would, what time frame is it when that station would start? I, I think the, the amendment um, is probably going to take 30 days. That's what Welsh is saying so there's at least a 30-day process. So we put October 1st as an expected date. That's probably not going to happen. happen. Um, I, you know, it's probably going to be either end of October or November, I would assume. Um, Bill, did you have discussions with Gromax since you've been supervisor? Have you spoken to them about our continued use of that site? Mm -hmm. Is it expected that we'd be allowed to do so with no strings attached? No. Yes. We just got a letter from them. And there is no strings attached. When we were I originally we were in, actually had when we were in discussions. Right. Yes, but that's changed. Well, we well that was what the yes, decision. We, do. we all got a letter. That's right. We recently got a letter, but we however, when did. we were discussing. What's the liability at that facility compared to this facility? What's the cost of it? Our insurance covers that operation okay, so of the transfer station. I'm not sure what the cost is per year, what we would have in savings, but it would be cheaper, I would guess, for Welsh then to operate at their site. So we would have no I would think we'd have some because it is a it's town. It's going to be the town transfer station, so yeah, I, I if, we, don't if we're t if we're keeping the registration with DEC. But we don't it own It belongs the to the town of Amelia. Right, so there's a difference there. But. Yeah, I mean. Um, How about as far as so many trips and balls and breaks away? Yeah, I, I don't know the answer. I mean, there were, when all those things sued, happen, guess, right? if yeah, Welsh would have some liability, the town may have some liability as well. To be sure you'll be the, sued. the town doesn't um, eliminate any possibility of, of liability from something like that just by having Welsh. But it would be the same had we kept the. There's no question you have it's the same it. With the, way. Yeah, you you. There's, there's nothing potential for liability right. where the transfer station is now. It's yeah. Right. No matter where you are, you're going to correct that happens. So that hasn't changed. So changed. Also now, based on the fact that the town board has received a letter from the owner of Girl Max, is the board willing to sit down with him and discuss the? We tried. Position? Before. But why not now since he because there was a letter. because he needs a zoning change in order to make his facility actually they compliant, wanted to compliant and they wanted, wanted to, to expand it that to yeah. the lease but it isn't now but, well I don't know that and yes you do you got a letter you same as I did uh, right, I got a letter I, we have negotiated with him as far as I negotiated the last time that was it so why not open a dialogue and sit down Stating that there would be no, no strings attached. You don't read the mail. Well, that's what set it. us on this right. route. We all read it. Yes, but. Well, you were also at the meeting with me in Gromax, Victoria. That yes, I said. was. Well, that's and they were, they were expecting a zoning that amendment then, so they could now. expand then, their facility. Pardon me? That was then, this is now. However, is that's what denied. led us on the pathway to say, yes. let's explore where we don't have strings attached. Let's, let's explore going our own way. Right Why should we expand a zoning amendment if that, suppose that facility, suppose Gromax 
we're not going to have their facility there anymore. That zoning amendment goes with the property. I so if we, that. well, they don't look at that. that. That's what you're missing. The last letter that two people got did away with that. But not that's that we originally had discussions, and that's what set us on the path to pursue and other you, now you need to venues. Your path. You got another road to go. This is cheaper for the townspeople. It saves money. It, it right. saves us $20,000 a year, and the people bring their bags of garbage any day of the week except Sunday or a holiday. So nothing has changed for the owners. Now, where's, of, where does the liability come for DEC if they screw up? The town has got that permit. It should, it'll fall, DEC will come back on you. Well, it's no fine. different than what you do. It'll, no, it's it'll no come different. back on you for a fine because they messed up. It's no different than what you do. What do you mean it's no different than what I do? If, we get, if you have a spill there, we get fine. We've already paid a fine. Did we pay a fine for your burning there or no? No. We didn't pay for that? No. Okay. There was nothing. Right. That's we got, right, the DEC was called because you were burning. That's right. Right. And that didn't have anything to do with us, period. They were mad at the count, but that's in the tree, but it's over All there. Right. Okay. But I'm just looking out for DEC just to find out you because they screw up because you hold the permit. You better look at it. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the bid from Welsh Sanitation to privatize the uh, transfer station to the facility on Route 343 or 44 at the Welsh Sanitation site. I second that. We have a discussion first? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, Mike, I'm in favor of closing it. My concern is in two years, we, right now we have negotiating power. While we don't necessarily want to be at that location anymore. Welsh will, I'm concerned Welsh is, or Royal Carding is going to offer us whatever we say we need, and then we've received no other bids. So in two years, what, what happens? I mean, we have to start looking for a new location for a transfer station if they aren't interested in extending at the same fees. I mean, we received no other bids, and that's really my, my concern, is what happens in two years. And my concern is that they have raised legitimate questions, one of them being just what you've said, aren't we beholden now to this one single carter in Dutchess County who, you know, we've now lost our opportunities per se at our current transfer station. What happens in these other towns that have moved to Welsh? Have they experienced an increase over time? I think if we let this hang for a week, at least to go and study this, see what other towns have, have experienced and not rush into this. It's Talk to Gromax, find out what they're offering on the table now so that we have all the information that we need to make a decision. It's a decision that will be hard to retract once we make the decision to accept this and move forward. I'd also like to know, for instance, the question, I know we looked into this before, Millerton residents do want a transfer station. They do want to use ours, but I didn't understand. I had thought that we were not able to. Bill, you said that they are not interested in I doing that. To, the town well, we cannot take other people's garbage. Is that true? Is, you, can see, you can't transfer garbage from one town to the other. Okay, Jim thought that if all you, you need to do is you form can, a committee and with both towns you can't represented. Do it. The DEC laws are very specific as to what you can do and what you can't do. I'm not, I'm not sure I'd have to look into that. I mean, it is. I, th I thought we looked into this, but if there right, is did. a chance of sharing services with the towns who don't have a service, like Millerton, closed theirs, didn't offer any other options. I don't understand why you would want to bring more st stuff to because a I would, piece of, that's on the That's the whole I reason think we're the moving this thing. reality is that we can, I would think, provide the kind of... Uh, uh, safeguards the metal and operate it so that it wouldn't in fact be a hazard to the aquifer. Well, the, everything's in containers. Of hundreds of thousands of dollars for us to do that. The only thing I see, I'm no expert, but I would think that if you contain the metal so that Not the in metal, fact. it's the stuff that comes in the garbage bags. That's the worst. But that's in a container. But the container's container. leaking. Not, I hope they're not. not. Why they're not uh, tight containers? They better not leak or we're getting well, snookered leak. here. There's I mean, we're paying a price for that to have 
leak-proof containers. They're not leak-proof containers. They've never been leak-proof containers. You know, I, I buy boxes by the hundreds of them, but they're never, they're never leak-proof containers. That's ridiculous. All I would say is that I would feel more comfortable at least a week or even a month later if that's what it takes to get a few people together or to take some time to call some other towns and say, what's your experience? I mean, I thought it was interesting to see, I was on the town of Washington website, the town, their town, town of Washington, operates their own transfer station with their highway department. Now, I don't know if that's a possibility with us, but if things go sour with Welsh, is there any chance that we could operate it at the town highway department? I sure. don't know. Uh, I'd like to see what their balance sheet is. Where are they making a loss every year to the tune of twenty thousand? Is there a, a cheaper way of operating? I don't know. I know our highway department has the kind of uh, things that can mash the, you know, com compact the um, garbage and that sort of thing, so that you get fewer tipping. No, the tipping is the same because it goes by the weight. The tipping so they is the same. But they charge us a haulage fee. So that haulage they, fee, you pay when, by they, the when that truck goes... They pay by the yeah. weight, but we also have a haulage fee. If yes, you look there at is. your invoices, you have two separate charges from right. Welsh. But I was on Resource Recovery Agency. Mm -hmm. Every truck that com comes into that station gets weighed mm -hmm. and gets sure. a receipt before it goes in. Whether or not it's piled up high right. or compacted, it goes by the weight but before it goes in that building. But you shouldn't have all these haulage fees if you have it compacted so that you don't well, have to make all these trips back and forth. we privatize it, we don't have to pay a thing. That's true. We don't pay a dime. No more haulage fees? No, no it's okay. clearly competitive. The question is, is down the road, one of the biggest questions is, down the road, when they're the only game in town, why would they not raise their fees? That's exactly right. Why would they not? I mean, they're the only game in but town. We've right shot ourselves in the foot because we've lost our... You know, unless the highway department or another place is found, the town does not have a lot of arable land to, to conduct, you know. We I don't think we're going to go back and operate this thing if we give it to Welsh. This is a one-time decision, I would think, down this road. No, we revis revisit in it two in years. two years. And then where are we going to put it? Well, you could always put it in the town garage. You always have that option. You're telling me doesn't you tell me nothing doesn't salt. leak. So what's the difference? It's a different type of well, you need one can. All you need if you, you need one can. <clears throat> I don't. You're just adding to the problem. It's it's purely hypocritical for us to continue operating the transfer station there. Right. So I and not and tell Gromax they can't have composting. That that's my concern. So I think it needs to move whether it's public or private, you know, I, th I think it needs to move. I just, it, you know, one of the reasons I was originally for this is because I just don't see where the town can operate el elsewhere beyond the highway garage, which if, I'm, I'm not really sure that's a great option either. But beyond that location, I just don't see where else we could operate it as we have been. But what about the loss that we incur every single year, over $20,000? every single year and we've talked about it and we've talked about it so in two years we save forty thousand dollars doesn't that mean something to the future of the taxpayers yes <laughs> no I, I think it does you and I yeah you don't read on the real trail you throw sixty thousand dollars in some for the city people come up here walk what the heck's wrong with your head I think one of the things oh, oh. that people have a problem with is Thank that you. they haven't seen the actual mm -hmm. numbers what, why don't we at least take a week? Can we put together a spreadsheet that just shows what the fees are now, what the fees are as proposed in this bid we received, look at some of the questions, and I mean, we meet again in seven days. So can we put this off for a week at least and look at some of the questions and at least be able to provide some responses to these issues like li what will our liability be compared to what we have now? Um, and and some of these other things that we've heard tonight. I'd like to talk to a few more towns and see how they experience this over time, working with Welsh, where they have given away their, off their own town operations, and then see what happens to the fees over time. I, and I understand, Bill, I, I understand your impatience. 
this isn't actually a new issue. You brought this up in January at our reorg meeting. So, I, I mean, that was the start of this. So I, I, I know this hasn't, isn't something that really just came up last month. It has been going on all year. But uh, at this point, one more week, uh, I think, I, I don't think we need, you know, we're in that much of a rush where we need to make a decision tonight. Up to you. I make a motion that we defer the decision of the bid for the transfer station to next week, meeting on Thursday, September 20th. I'll second that. Councilwoman Reamer? Yes. Councilwoman Perotti? Yes. Councilman Haas? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Flood? No. Same. You just moved it. You move it to a town site. That's it. Well, we would have to supply the manpower. It's always going to be town operated. All you have to do is move it to the town garage or or here. You could there's, no, here. there's no restart costs. No. Well, we we would need our own operators to do it. Right, right, right. So there again, the cost. Or you is. could still privatize it at somewhere else. That's what with with whatever you yeah. can do. You know, it's obviously you know. I don't think the people in the town of Amini. I think at this point you're either going to look at a tax increase. Or you're going to start saving some money, so that yeah. that's the that's the issue, and, and we'll and get into that in a second. But I think you know if, if people feel more comfortable with it. Um, What's that? I think I think people understand it more than it. It's not like Welch's is coming to your house with a container. So, but I I think a lot of people were thinking that way that they're going to have to pay the Welch's fee, and that's well, not the totally case. they're totally misled. No, yeah. No, no. So, well, that was the reason we didn't do the. All right, we have to move on. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're done. Thank you. I don't want to be here all night. Yeah. Uh, resolutions closing Manicot Road and Old North Road for Juvenile. The, the um, what resolution is this? 59. Number 59 of 2012. Awarding. Oh, uh, no. Uh, Closing my gap and Old North Roads for annual juvenile diabetes walk September 15, 2012, whereas the annual juvenile diabetes walk has been scheduled for September 15, 2012 by the Amenia Lions Club, and whereas the Amenia Lions, the Amenia Town Board recognizes that the juvenile diabetes is a continuing problem for many members of our community, and whereas the Amenia Lions Club requests my gap road and Old North Road be closed on September 15, to all traffic except residents of the said roads and handicapped drivers participating in the walk. And whereas the said events require activities on both sides of Mygat Road and Old North Road between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. It is essential to ensure the safety of the participants be, be it therefore resolved that the town of, of Amenia will close Mygat Road on, and Old North Road from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. on September 15, 2012. Moved by Councilman. I move. Seconded by. I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Supervisor Flood. Yes. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Haas. Yes. Councilwoman Perotti. Yes. And Councilwoman Reamer. Yes. Yes. Mike, do you want to speak now? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Michael Kelsey, County Legislator. Uh, I'll try to be brief. Uh, last month when I was here, I spoke about the, uh, the county budget uh, predicament that we have a shortfall and, uh, and suggested that as we move forward in the budget season that uh, probably what we can expect is a budget that suggests a tax increase 
borrowing money or layoffs. Uh, what I didn't foresee was a fourth possibility that uh, was subject matter of a letter uh, that went out from the county executive to all the town supervisors and uh, village mayor, city mayors, uh, this uh, about a week or so ago. Uh, and that letter uh, informed the heads of the municipalities that the county would be reducing uh, their sales tax uh, for this year and going forward, putting a cap on the sales tax revenue that the county shares. Uh, for Amenia, that's about $31,000 this year. Uh, now, I did... Uh, 36, uh, 36, I'm sorry. I got four towns in my head. Uh, 30, 36,000. Uh, Supervisor and I did uh, uh, go back a little bit over email. Um, this letter that was sent uh, to Supervisor was the first that I, I knew about this. I was copied on the letter. Uh, and typically, the, the county executive prepares a budget. We get it November 1st in the legislature, and then we act on it. Uh, since then, I've spoken with the county executive, I've spoken with the controller and my fellow legislators. Um, and s the county executive has the authority uh, to withhold all sales tax revenue if he decides from towns. Uh, the history uh, of it, a little history lesson, is in the 1970s, uh, when the county was going from Board of Supervisors to the county legislature, uh, the state had the authority for counties and cities to have a sales tax levy. And at that point, City of Poughkeepsie had one, and the county said, we will have a, a uh, sales tax, but we'll share it. City of Poughkeepsie, City of Beacon would no longer issue a, a sales tax and the revenue would be shared. There was a formula adopted that would share not only with the cities, but with all the towns. Uh, and it's on a scale where the lion's share, about 87%, goes to the two cities, and what's left gets shared between the towns. Uh, that formula expired in 2005, uh, and it was not renewed. Uh, and there was the legislature about two or three years ago uh, pr uh, passed a resolution asking the county executive and the mayors and supervisors to uh, renew it. Nothing happened. So there is nothing in place that says the county has to uh, distribute revenue, sales tax revenue, to the towns and municipalities. Uh, last several years, we've done so. Uh, and this year, the county executive, because the county is facing a huge uh, budget shortfall, uh, is uh, he's ch choosing to cap sales tax revenue uh, at $25 million countywide, of which 36000 would be lost from Amenia. Uh, at the same time, he is seeking to form a task force to review the sales tax formula for the future. He's also seeking to uh, basically get rid of the election cost-sharing formula I've spoken about in the past several years where each town pays a portion of the cost to put on elections, such as today, primary. Uh, and so that would recoup some funds, uh, but it would still be a loss this year, 36000 and then going forward. Uh, the fourth thing he suggested in the letter uh, was to take $1 million of that money from sales tax coming back and set up a grant program. And that grant program would be available to towns, villages, cities to bid on uh, for ways to shrink the size of government, ways to consolidate government, and each year it could apply for them, and then it'd be up to a million dollars available uh, as a grant. Uh, and his words was to incentivize um, government to shrink, to consolidate, and he said that he believes that's what voters are asking for. Uh, so that's the letter went out. Uh, there's not, my understanding is there's not much, even if it, we wait to the sales, to uh, the county budget reaches the legislature, I don't think w the legislature has the authority to put the money back in. I mean, we could, but ultimately the county executive can do what he wants. Uh, two years ago, if you remember, legislature passed money for the libraries, including the Amenia Library, including money for tick research at Cary Institute, and the county executive uh, at the time, Bill Steinhaus, withdrew the money. We could shout all we wanted that we said we want to put that in, but the money didn't go back in. Uh, so, our, so there's not much that we really can do, um, but that's what's being said. That's what the letter uh, addressed. Questions we before me? We have a shortfall of uh, $22,230 in sales tax. So at this point uh, next year, uh, we did pay the $13,802 for the uh, so elections. The elections. We paid that the other day. That's done. We took plan A instead of the okay. plan B. For, you could, um, that's it. We're done with that. 
so that you know mm -hmm. this transfer station is part of this budget obviously that's what we're doing the uh, we need to have some savings so we have some savings we have some um, the question I have is that if they capped it, is it a cap for one year or is this going to continue for a while? He says it's a cap. What his letter says, and I've read it a couple times, is it's a cap, $25 million. Uh, but at the same time, as far as what happens next year is unclear, but it, he also in the letter said this is the, a multi-year process. Right. Um, he also did say that, you know, there's a task force to review the formula. Uh, now, there's been discussion at the legislature, I've asked it a couple times, why don't we review this formula? Why does the city of Poughkeepsie, city of Beacon take the most uh, when, for instance, most, mo I would argue most of the sales tax is generated in the town of Poughkeepsie. Um, but but I, nobody's wanted to touch it because in the same time, some towns might be getting more right now than they would otherwise. It uh, really depends if you look at how it's set up. So if they have this task force go forward reviewing the formula, uh, I would basically say you're, you're, you don't, one, you don't know how the formula is going to look, but if it takes place next year, uh, the numbers could change. And whether it's up or down remains to be seen. And the county, the $42 million still hold? The, the $40 million uh, is the number that in January the county executive said there's a budget shortfall of $40 million. Uh, and that was January. Uh, here we are in September. Uh, how that number has arrived, I, I've asked. Uh, for an accounting to figure out what it is. When we passed last year's budget, we did so with 25 million borrowed from our fund balance. That means that we had a rainy day fund, we took 25 million, that automatically starting out the year, we're short 25 million for next year. On top of that, there was a two million that we thought was gonna come in reforms from Albany on Medicaid that didn't. That brings us to 27 million. Where the, the remaining 13 million comes from, uh, some of it there are expenses. Uh, there's going to be more uh, housing out costs for the jail, um, probably that we're going to have to vote on. That we're anticipating probably about a million and a half. Uh, this month there was 1.8 million that we had to, to vote on. That's not in our budget, and that 1.8 million is due to a union uh, taking the county to court over negotiations for their contract. It's the uh, PBA, the deputy sheriffs. Uh, it resulted in an arbitration settlement uh, where the judge gave them a uh, uh, five point, I think it's three percent increase in their salary. Uh, and so there's, we have no choice because it's coming from arbitration, uh, but there's another 1.8 million that nobody planned for. So little by little things increase. Uh, so they're saying 40 million. There has been some questions about whether that number is accurate. Uh, regardless of the actual number, uh, we, we are in a tough budget year. Uh, and and unfortunately, there, uh, there will be layoffs. I anticipate there's probably going to be about 100 layoffs. Uh, I'm also anticipating that the county budget, when the executive produce, gives it to us, I'm thinking it's probably going to have a tax increase past the property tax cap. The number we're hearing is 7%, could be more. What we, uh, what we do in the legislature, we'll find out in November, but it is tough shape. Uh, the early retirement incentive, uh, right now they've, they've offered uh, employees that are eligible, been there for 30 years or more. Uh, if they re retire by November 1st or November 30th, uh, they will get 20,000 and then that will allow them out the door and some other jobs might be kept. Uh, of that program, uh, 79 people have applied for it. Uh, well, 100 people applied for it, 79 were eligible. Uh, and the budget office is telling us that will save uh, about 24 million over the next five years. So there are efforts being made to try to control the costs and efforts we're going to be shrinking government. Uh, we've been shrinking government. We've been on bare budget, uh, bare bones budget for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, we have this gap and the uh, effort right now uh, letter from the county executive is he's going to, you know, share the pain and uh, in, in doing so is, is withholding some sales tax money. That's one way. The rest of the ways we'll be seeing I probably there'll be proposed tax increase and there'll be layoffs. So that's where we are. Well, he told us at the meeting to be roughly 200 people. To go 200? Okay. Right. Uh, so somewhere between a 7 to 10 percent tax increase. Okay. 7 percent. That's what he said, but I, I don't know if they can hit the 7 percent. Yeah, it, it's we're, we're, we 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 get the county executive did speak with us last week uh, after letters went out. He came to our our caucus and spoke with us. Kind of told us where we're headed. Um, 
budget is due November 1st, uh, but he said come November 1st, you'll physically get possession, but you should know all the elements by that point, and we're gradually hearing what they are, uh, and then it, it is a tough budget. And in county government has to change. It, it's been changing, and it you know it has to continue changing. Services that we rely on, we're not going to be able to afford anymore. Um, so that's uh, that's where we are, budget wise. Um, on that matter, it's pretty much I can understand it, I can follow it, but there's not much I can do. Uh, one area where I have been able to show some leadership, uh, and I've been reporting the last couple months, is a property tax exemption uh, for low-income disabled people. Uh, that's a, a a resolution I, I introduced and floated an idea in February, introduced it in April, and I kind of reported that it was somewhat cold reception. Uh, we had discussions, we made an amendment, uh, and I'm happy to say that this uh, past week it passed unanimously. Uh, and what that does is it gives tax relief to uh, low-income disabled persons who make less than 32000 a year and own a home. Uh, so there is at least some silver liner for some people, one segment of society that's vulnerable. Uh, in other news, we, uh, we appointed two members to the Dutch County College Board of Trustees. One was a, a reappointment, Betsy Seaman Brown. Uh, the second was uh, our chairman, Rob Rollison, uh, will now be a legislator on that board. Uh, for those of you who may remember, Rob did come out here at one point. We had a community forum. Uh, so it's, as a chairman, it's not just one district. He represents the whole county, so I think that's a good, good uh, move. Uh, we also had discussions, it's going to be a several month discussion on the use of brine uh, on our county roads. Brine is the water that is uh, produced during fracking. Uh, and when fracking takes place, uh, who knows what kind of chemicals are being used. Uh, it does not have to be reported. Uh, and the water, the byproduct, the waste product uh, is readily available. And so some places are using it. Uh, on their roads uh, for de-icing purposes. Uh, the resolution, the local law we're considering is looking at what impact that may have on health. Currently the county does not use it, um, but there's proposed a ban on use of brine. Uh, and so we're looking into that. Uh, it sounds like at least until we know more, it's probably a good idea not to use it, and we're not using it. Um, but we started that discussion next couple weeks, next couple months. So I think, um, that's pretty much what we've been doing in the county level. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll be back next month to continue to update you on what's going on. Actually, um, I have a question. Sure. I want to know what's being done about the unfunded mandates. There was a uh, mm -hmm. committee to study them, which they did very little mm -hmm. to help the county. Is that committee still in existence? Is it something that the governor is still looking at? Because um, something should be done about the unfunded mandates that the county has to cope with and local government has to cope with. I know one thing they didn't even address was the Wix law and prevailing wage is certainly um, a, a burden on all the local governments. I just wondered if there's anything, any discussion going to be ongoing to give some to look at giving some kind of relief to the counties and the local governments, and and, and that's the right question. You know, uh, the unfunded mandates, uh, Medicaid being number one, uh, uh, pensions is another one, uh, special education costs, uh, early intervention. It goes on and on. Uh, all these expenses from Albany tells us you have to spend money on this program, this program here, here, and here, and then what? And those keep rising. And then with what's left, we have to fund the services that we think are important. And when I say services, they're ones that, that are no-brainers, you know, road patrols for the sheriffs, um, health department, uh, snow plowing, and w office for the aging services. And then we're stuck with having to figure out how do you use this little money, stretch it, and when so much of our budget is what Albany is telling us. Well, is the governor going to be looking at this going forward, or do you just, we, you know, we, the committee ended and that's it, and we, everybody's well, on their own? We, we were promised uh, uh, both property tax cap, which they delivered, and mandate relief, and that never materialized. No, it and, didn't. And nothing's been done. No, 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 absolutely nothing. Our county executive was on that committee. Um, nothing happened. Um, right now, in September, they start... Cuomo will give his budget in January, and they work through April. I'm sure we'll start hearing more about it in those months. Right now, campaign season, today's primary day. I've heard some candidates talk about it, but the likelihood of Albany doing it, 
we don't know. We, we sorely need it, but nothing. I, I, I have no idea what's down the pike. We, but until it happens, we're going to be in the same boat. You know, our economics you know, are poor. The county, our sales tax, we get $236,731. We, we're going to lose $36,000. We're going to pick up the cost of the election. So roughly we're losing $22,000 next year right off the bat before we start. As of yesterday, our, um, our uh, retirement fund for the general, general account went up $10,000. The highway department went up $6,300. So that's another sixteen thousand dollars that we have to come up with in this this year's budget right. for next year. For pension. For pensions, it does, doesn't include another uh, eight to ten percent increase in health insurance mm -hmm. uh, that we that we're anticipating. We haven't gotten the full figures yet, but that's what we're anticipating. Uh, some of these mandates are just incredible. What they're you know the fuel costs, everything. The fuel costs we increased ten thousand dollars. Right. Because fuel, and obviously, what's happening in the Middle East, the fuel is going to go through the roof in the next couple of weeks. So, it's uh, the yeah. budgets are tight. I under, you know, he's got his hands full. There's no question. Absolutely, and and I think we're going to see all towns have their hands full. And we we have a, a department. Um, we've been continually tightening our belts. And uh, just to give you an idea, I think last year I told you we we merged three departments into one. Uh, we created uh, services for aging veterans and youth, where they were three distinct ones. Uh, this month, we've had, we have an acting commissioner, and we reappointed her, and we just reappointed her through the end of the year. And the question is, why are you appointing, reappointing someone only for a couple months? And the belief is that that department we've already merged once is probably going to merge with another one, and we're not going to keep a commissioner there. Um, so I mean, we're just looking government shrinking further and further down. We uh, have to. Yeah. We have to shrink it. And yeah. That's the only way we're going to survive. Yeah. And so it's a matter of choosing which programs do you keep and employees as well. You know, I mean, we're already down so many and then, uh, you know, we'll continue to just keep shrinking and, and it's, it's a, just a state of our country, state of the economy. Even with a 2% tax cap, we could be a 10% tax increase here. Right. Well, not, not that we're doing that, but that's, yeah. we've cut we've cut and we have to continue to cut in order to, to save money for the taxpayers or else the taxes are right. going to go up. It, it, we have to control spending but at the same time there's everything's increasing like you just said and so even you can cut as much as you want but every utilities and pensions and everything is still going up so it's yes and, and you also have a huge demand on service social services especially is you know with the economy tough more people are applying um, and one one uh, good revelation or whatever is that the now on the county website uh, the county executive presented to us last week they now have a thing called dashboard and if you click on it the dashboard in the sake of transparency lists all the statistics that uh, we've been privy to is now out there for the public to look at you can see the employment rate you can see unemployment rate you can see social services rates you can see the tax levies for various years um, inmate count at the jail I mean all that data is so much there that you know it, that if it really you know especially for the reporters it provides a lot of information out there on where things are headed and where w you can see how things have climbed and how things have uh, decreased um, in the last several years so on sake of transparency it's a good thing. Know that there's 46,000 people on uh, social services may very well be there's charts on there too, and you can just see as they've been climbing and climbing, and since 2007 they've just been sky high, and and unfortunately more people going on in employment, same thing as and how do you help them get back? But until the economy improves, it's okay. yeah. So okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 7%. So thank you for clarifying the 36 is being cut from 236. If you don't tell us the total, the cut is a meaningless number. It's hanging out there in space. 7% increase, they're talking about an overall tax increase or the share we have to give? You, you and Michael were just talking about a 7% increase. This is... County. 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 Taxes County. Will go, County. are going up. They're not going to make it. That's well, the they, they raise money from sales taxes and what we give them in real estate taxes. So right. which bucket? We don't know yet. That's what they need to raise. Is that what you're saying? Have they said where they're raising it from? They're going to raise your taxes. Overall, oh. overall, 
all their overall. When you get your tax you get bill, your, there's going to be a seven percent property tax. real estate. Thank you. Well, they raise money from sales tax too. I didn't know whether they were talking about changing yes. that. Okay, so they're going to raise it. They're not just keeping it the same and taking a bigger share, leaving us with less, like they just did on the sales tax. You're not talking no, about that. No, they're talking the overall budget. It's going to be up seven percent. And then just a procedural thing. Then what? I'm not taking a position one way or the other. How do they structurally do that with this supposed 2% tax cap? Is there, is there a way around that if it's an emergency? They override it. Super, super majority voting. What's the super majority number? 66, uh, 60 75? 60 okay, thank you. I just want to clarify. Mike, do you want to go over this? Oh, you need to follow the block first? Yep. Okay. Do we have to do that tonight? No? Are you going to do this? Is this the hearing continuing? Yeah. You still have the public right. hearing open. Well, why don't you give us the information that you got okay. when you talked to um, Beth Doyle? Because uh, there were several roads mentioned by highway, and we needed to know whether they're in zone two or three and eligible. I did look into it, Victoria. There's a new grant application, and there's a, uh, the county is having a public hearing actually next to, uh, next Wednesday morning, which I intend to go to. I looked over the app, the new application. And in light of some of the discussion that occurred, it seemed like there were at least two major projects that were brought up at the last meeting. Um, one being infrastructure, which is a top priority of Dutchess County. I think Stanley mentioned three projects or three roads that he was interested in uh, working on. One was Clark Hill Road. Uh, I guess his first choice was separate road, and uh, he also mentioned Sheffield Road. Both of those, though, are in Block Group 1 in, Duchess, in Amenia, which is... Um, Separate in Sheffield are. Yes, so that is Census uh, Track 100 Block Group 1 in Amenia, which happens to be the one area of the town that is not over the 48% threshold of low to moderate income residents. Um, I did try to clarify that with the county. I put a call into them because it looks like, even according to their own figures, that the entire town still is eligible. If the threshold is 48.1, block group one is 48.1. So I guess they're saying that uh, in order to be eligible, more than that has to be. The, to be, yeah. rail trail. be uh, the rail trail, I believe, it is eligible because it's in block group two. And two and three, they told me, are eligible. Um, so yes, um, I believe by on an area basis. And looking at um, the new forms, Bill, I did find that it does say in here that Priority will be given to projects that are consistent with applicable county plans, greenway connections, um, and the Poughkeepsie Dutchess County Transportation Council plan. So that it is definitely eligible. And it's also projects that are leveraged with other funding sources. So I think that would be a good, it could actually be a very good candidate. Um, and then they fund still, um, they support improvements to municipal parks and recreation areas including playground equipment and handicapped accessibility improvements. Um, so really, we would have to focus the application on that aspect of the rail trail, that you're improving handicapped accessibility and the, in, uh, sort of an economic development project. Um, but it is up to the town board. I did, um, in thinking of that, I did prepare um, draft resolutions or could have them ready for you, too, to take action because... Um, we have to have in, right? Yes, we need to have a town board resolution, minutes of the public hearing, and notice of the meeting. For the community development? Right. You, no, you just we you continue continued it from the, so we can just vote on it. So. Well, you should close the public hearing before you, if you, if the board chooses to do that. Well, we can ask if there's any other comment, or, or do we have to do that? Since it's yeah, still open? You can do that, and, but I would just close the public hearing before you vote on this. Is there any more public comment on the uh, CBD? Transfer station. No. No. Transfer station. Just continue. Where are we on? Community mm -hmm. development block grants. Community block grants. I'll make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Roll second. 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 Uh, just so that, uh, I'll second that motion, but then I just want to ask our attorney. Second, second. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Um, Ian, our agenda doesn't have this listed tonight. Is that, would that be a flaw in our application that we don't, even though we continued it from the last meeting, 
that because it's not list actually listed on the agenda. As long as it's in the minutes. Okay. All right. I just because the minutes sure will have to go in. Have to be I wouldn't want agenda. there to be any flaws in our application or the resolution. You know, no. the motion we've made. Okay. Because the minutes will have to go with That's the application. Correct. Okay. As long as it's in the minutes. The roll call, please. Councilwoman Rima. Yes. Councilwoman Perotti. Yes. Councilman Haas. Yes. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. And Supervisor Flood. Yes. And we need a motion to put this money to somewhere, right? Well, there is an actual form that, uh, it, and I, um, I did prepare a draft. I don't know, did you want to actually vote on it tonight, or did you want to wait until possibly next week, um, only in that it would still have a chance to, um, I did talk to Stanley, for example, today. I think he was under the impression that the hearing was next week, but um, also um, the trail to the train. I did prepare, um, it just is a form that they have um, stating that you've had the hearing, you've heard from public comments, um, or I can, let me just see if I have it, if you did want to vote on that tonight. Is, uh, it, is it a draft or you have it all set up? It's pretty much set up. I mean, I'll just. Well, how does the board feel? Do you want to vote okay. on this? I mean, can we wait a week just so we can review the resolution before we, and have time to. Yes, so actually we haven't, we haven't looked at the resolution. Yeah. Eligible yeah. Or is Park Hill Road would be the only road project eligible. Well, that's yes. the one that Stanley's interested in, and it, that's, it, it has that is received, so it's received CDBG funds in the past yeah. also. So. You know, the other two aren't. They're not in the zones. Zone know. two and three is are the, the ones we get we get money yeah, from. I got that. Is it the board's, board's uh, in favor of moving this 150000 towards the rail trail, the, the train? I think it's a competitive, it sounds like a competitive project, and I think it's a one-time opportunity to get the funding in. We, we need it for it, our right. budget. Yeah, I mean, we, we need, need it. To finish. No, I think it's a good project. I do, too. Funding. I yes. do too. So what is the project? The, the, the trail to the train. Trail to the train. Uh, the remaining funds that are needed to build that. So that'll put us almost there. Should put, Should us, put us right there. Right there. It actually would, I think, even maybe have a little bit of a, a contingency. Yeah. If you account the local match that you've right. agreed to, the 120,000. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we have 590,000 in total grants, we've begin, we've almost closed out the Greenway grant for $10,000 because of the design costs. We I'm uh, working hard to get the dormitory authority contract finalized, 100,000, and then we have the TEP grant for 480,000. Now, uh, as if we do get, if we do apply for community development block grant funds for this, are they going to require that a certain amount is going to be have to be completed? Because usually with the community development block grant, there's a completion day. Well, it actually, it's a good point, and yes, and I think that could help you too, because I think everyone's eager to get this project done quickly. Right. And yes, Dutchess County does have a deadline. I think it's 18 months you have to get there. If you get a grant, say, in January. But I, I think what we need to do is check with the county. I mean... Well, I think that well, the construction should, should start in spring, right? For, for yes, well, assuming yeah. the design is approved by the Department of Transportation and the right-of-way is cleared. Although, I think we do have to continue to work with the Department of Transportation, because last time I was there, they, meant, you know, they, um, I mentioned, they mentioned the right-of-way issue as being usually something that can take a long time. And we know that from history, that that is one of the things that the Department of Transportation is very careful about, at least our region. And, uh, yeah, I just want to make I just want to make sure that you know are they going to require that the whole project be done from the date we receive the community development block grant if we should receive it. I mean, they usually don't give us a letter until like March of next year, so we should have. Another well, it depends time. on how we write it, I guess, and also um, I'm, I do have a call into Beth Doyle. And I'm going to go to the public hearing next Wednesday, so I could ask then when I see her, too. Yeah, I, I think that's something that we really need to <laughs> look at to make sure, you know, we don't lose anything. And I have a transportation meeting, I think it's next week, the week after. So we, I can ask them where, where we are in that process. I think they'd be yeah, excited by that. In the past. Right. It's, it's just not looked favorably upon the extension. next time they right. do consider that when they're right. going to hear you next time. But I think this is such a big project. <laughs> right. It would be <coughs> such a feather in their cap to be the final funding partner, I would think. They did change the priorities because in the past it actually mentioned rail trails, and I, so I'm a little concerned by that. But it still is funding for parks is in there. 
they're more interested in economic development projects, which this is this really. Is. Yes, so yeah. I think it could be a good well, match. That was the whole point of doing it, was the economic development. And tourism. Do you want to talk about the... Uh, Main Street. You know, we, the Main Street grant. Oh, yes. Well, um, it's online now. Uh, yep. The webmaster put it on the website, which is good. Uh, I did find out a couple other things that were interesting as a follow-up to that meeting. I spoke to Crystal Loeffner of Office of Community Renewal. She's happy that we had the meeting um, and that the grant is back on track. She also mentioned, because I brought up some questions that were brought up, the Amenia Library could actually apply for funding for uh, just a, so that they are definitely eligible. It's not prohibited. Even the town could use uh, funding. Uh, but if we do things on town property, uh, then prevailing wages do come into play. She was saying it becomes a public works project. So, but um, so I thought that was interesting that it could actually there more there could be more beneficiaries even of the grant. Um, and then uh, we. Well, we've done what we had to. Now it's a matter of um, getting the applications and developing a scoring system. We have to work on what your priorities are for projects, really, is what she said. The next step is really for Amenia to decide what are your priorities for projects in downtown Amenia. I also uh, mentioned someone had brought up the idea that the streetscape funds could be used um, for like a band shell or even for that pavilion idea of the farmer's market. And they actually were very positive about that. They said that was a good idea and it could possibly work um, for that 25000 if that was what you were interested in doing. Um, so it was just, it's interesting that you do have a lot of leeway as the town. We just have to be, follow the rules of the contract. And uh, the next step is to receive the applications, maybe do a little bit more outreach to the library and see if there's any other businesses that may be interested. And then deciding what are your... Uh, priorities for projects. Did you find out what the um, exact pr parameters are for a location, if it has to stop at the intersection or if West Main Street, anything on West Main Street would be eligible as well? And I just understood you said that the town itself, the town hall property might be available also for consideration, <laughs> even though the focus of our grant was it's not, nece not necessarily the town hall, it's town property. It would be this town property because you have bought May East Main Street with the be, tennis courts. Sorry, it has to be? It has to be on East Main. Well, I, I guess uh, the point is it could possibly be on this property which abuts East Main Street if it is something that makes East Main Street a more livable community. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then uh, that's like why... Connecting our parking to, let's say, East, uh, to East Main. Yes. Our parking with an alternative... Or like he was mentioning, a band, a band shell. I mean, band some shell, right. some structure would be considered too. Right. So, I, so that's up to the town. Yeah, it's really open to think about what we could do. Uh, I, the tar they are strict about the target area. I think there is one building that was on West Main Street that was interested in the grant last year and actually was at the meeting. Uh, and yeah, I think that one is eligible. We did say that that was eligible just based on the description of the target area okay. from the light to uh, Mechanic Street, really. But it could be just a business. It doesn't have to be business and residential. Um, we could do it that you would have several projects. There's only 160,000. Um, but I'll talk to her further. She was just, you know, she wanted to know what had happened at the meeting. Um, so I guess it would be behoove us to, I guess, to get the applications in and then start uh, set up a scoring system of some sort uh, okay. for you like we did with the... Um, they have to be in by the end of September. Yes. That's correct. And they're online, the application that you handed out the other day? Yes. Okay. I think, you know, the public needs to know that because that meeting was not televised so that, you know, other people may just be knowing about this, learning about it tonight. So they need to go online and see if... It was nice he was able to put it on so quickly. Yes. And if they have any questions, there are some yes. forms, too, they need to fill out, like those release forms. Yep. But that's actually not as critical. We don't really need them on the 30th. If the, okay. we choose them as a project, we will need them. I just wanted to give them the background that they'll need. Yep. So. Great. Anyway, it's exciting to have that grant. I'm looking okay. forward to getting okay, it. Okay, back to community development block grant. Are we going, are you, you're going to a meeting, the meeting, to, is it Tuesday morning? Uh, I think it's Wednesday or at Wednesday the morning. planning department. Okay, did, um, so in order to 
So you're going to get a little bit more information, and then we'll vote on the resolution next week. Is that correct? Is that what yes, and I can email you the draft resolution. I've already prepared it. I gave you a copy, but um, okay. Yes. So we can go ahead because it has to be in October 19th. Yes. Okay. I've done these in the past for the town. I can put it I together. I also sent you an email about a grant, uh, a foundation for the uh, rural arts. Arts. I'd looked at that. It looked very interesting, and I do want to pursue that further and let them, because I know they are looking for grants. I also sent that to Bowie at the Wasay Project, so somehow if you could give me a call tomorrow, I'll, I'll put you two together. So I, I think that it sounded very interesting that something that, you know, for rural communities yes. to uh, promote art and so on and so forth, that would be great for, for Wasay. So I'll call you, give me her number, or yeah. we'll put, it, put me in touch yeah. with her? Okay. Okay. Sounds good, Bill. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. We have to do this uh, seven something. Do you have that tonight? Are we doing that? The uh, change order? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The proposed change order. I had submitted a uh, proposed resolution. It's an extra resolution that isn't on the agenda. So this is this is regarding the landfill or the cleanup of the old landfill. This is resolution number sixty of twenty twelve. Approval of construction change order number one from Sevenson and Environmental Services on Amenia Landfill Remediation Project. At the meeting of the, the town board, the town of the town of Amenia Town Board held at the Amenia Town Hall on the 13th day of September 2012 at 7 p.m. Town, town Supervisor William Flood called the meeting to order and seconded by, I, I forget where it was, and then moving into the violation to wit, whereas the town of Amenia has entered into a contract with Seventh Environmental Service Inc. dated March 13th, 2012, original contract to perform certain remedial construction work at the Amenia Town Landfill located on Route 22 in the Town of Amenia, Amenia Landfill Project. Whereas the contract, the original contract price for the services provided by Sevenson is $4,644,879.50. And whereas Sevenson has presented the town board with construction change order number one, dated se September 6, 2012, a copy of which is attached here to pertaining to additional work performed or to be performed by Sevenson, which is not included on the original contract for the reasons set forth in more detail in the attached construction change order number one, but summarized as follows. One, an area of deeper sediment was encountered during construction and needed to investigate, investigate it to determine whether it was contaminated and required removal. Two boulders rocks from the contamination site were requested by the town to be used by a stream bank stabilization project, which required the cleaning and washing of the boulders rocks. Three, the quality of PCP contaminated soil provided in the bid documents was estimated and adjusted. An adjustment is needed to account for the actual amount excavated and disposed of. An area of deeper sediment and soft underlying conditions was encountered by Sevenson and required temporary access roads to remove the contaminated sediment. The, the testing requirements for the New York State uh, De Department of Environmental Conservation, DEC speedies permit e e equivalent requirements are being updated to meet the DEC speedies permit equivalent. And six, Stevenson is re reforming to the sediment re remediation work in the Southern Marsh area, wet removal conditions rather than dry conditions, which requires a higher sampling frequency for metals and PCPs than those re contained in the original contract. Whereas the requested fee increase for the service to contain in construction change order number one is equal to $298,165.20. And whereas the approval of the cha construction change order number one would result in an increase the original contract as a result of construction change order number one to 4943044.70. And whereas pursuant to the state assistance contract, with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, the DEC is providing the funding for 75% of the eligible engineering and construction costs on the Amenia Landfill Project, and whereas the town board believes that the additional costs contained 
in the construction change order will be eligible for funding under the state assistance contract the, with the DEC and the town will, will only be responsible for 25 percent of the additional cost as a result of construction change order number one and whereas the DEC has approved the construction change order number one by email correspondence dated September 10th 2012 a copy of which is here attached here too and whereas the town board has reviewed construction change order number one along with the supporting documentation attached thereto and the approval email correspondence from DEC dated September 10th 2012 and whereas the town board has determined that the additional services provided by or to be provided by sevens in the construction change order number one are necessary in order to complete the remediation of the old land immediate landfill and whereas the town board has determined that it is in the best interest of the town to approve construction change order number one and to authorize the town supervisors to sign the same and whereas the approval of a change order is a type two action under new york state environmental quality review act seeker and is therefore not subject to seeker review and and now therefore be resolved that the town board approves construction change order number one from Sevenson in the amount of $298,165.20. And it is hereby resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the town supervisor to sign construction change order number one in the form attached hereto on behalf of the town. The foregoing resolution was voted upon all council by all, with all council women and councilmen voting as follows. Supervisor Flood? Yes. Councilman Haas? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilwoman Perotti? Yes. And Councilwoman Rima? Yes. Has anybody been there to see this under uh, construction? Any board members? Just been by here? the road. Just by I the road. I think it's not allowed unless you have like a. Well, you, you, they'll take you in if you, you, you can walk the perimeter. Okay. But they walk with you. Yeah, you have to have an appointment, and it's yep. town only. It's not a correct, correct. No, no public can no public go out there. Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just call them and ask for a tour. Yeah. Is this a good time to? It's pretty impressive what they're doing. Yeah. They're, we'll they're heading down the home stretch here. Okay. Uh, That's a good idea. We've uh, we still have about eight hundred thousand dollars in contingencies, which will we'll see where we are. We still have got the price on the southern end of it. The, the landfill actually went out beyond the, the uh, buffer zone, so that, that that's going to be an extra that's coming in. Yes. Um, they're also, uh, but they've come up with a new way of capping the um, landfill. They're not going to use sand. They're going to use some kind of a geotextile. That's a hundred thirty-five thousand dollars savings. Um, they have built one road out into the waterway with the mats and the wood so they're digging out in there and they put up a coffer dam which is pretty impressive that they, it holds all that water back and they, they're pumping water amazing. they've been pumping water for a couple days hmm. uh, it's amazing what they've done what's the time frame for them finishing they were hoping this year but i don't think they're going to make it probably early spring of next year mm -hmm. but uh, they're really moving along fairly quickly so we'll see. Maybe they'll get it done. So the full three hundred thousand dollars is within our contingency Not budgeted. This. this is extra. That's, That's additional. Extra. In right. addition, okay. Right. We have paid a, a interest payment. Uh, we paid it uh, last week. We paid eight uh, eight or nine thousand. Uh, we're we'll gonna have a principal payment due at the end of December also. So we have to start paying this now, and then next year we start paying. So as soon as they haven't let us tell us what the figures are yet, but we have to start making principal payments of this already. Because you started and borrowing the money two budgeted. years ago. Well, there is a little bit. The Wayne did put some money in there for budget, so there is some there. But the uh, we have to start paying next in maybe December. We have to pay another payment, but next year we start paying. But we'll also get some of the money re repaid back, 75% of our payments. Yeah. We, we're going to owe, I, I would assume, somewhere around a million dollars before we're done, I would think. For our share. Realistically. Because that the, this $1.6 million that you got as a grant, they sort of changed things a little bit. They're only going to pay 50% of the uh, true cost. 
So if it's two million, they're going to pay a million, and they're going to pay the full one six. So it's they changed the formula a little bit, I see. which they just told us that the other day. So Liz is checking to make sure to see where we are with this thing. So mm -hmm. that's where we're at with this thing. Well, I thank you for getting it down to the three hundred thousand. I thought we were going to be stuck with more like seven hundred thousand dollars. Well, the original bid was eight hundred, and, yeah, and the Liz, so and, and we, uh, Liz is actually it's incredible. CT Mail did they, they really, um, and they're um, worked. Their number crunchers or whatever they are, their budget people just really crunch the numbers, and Sevenson had no, no way of backing out. And then there's some days that they said we owed extra days because um, uh, they couldn't get the work done, but they couldn't get the work done because they couldn't get the coffer dam in because it was never delivered. So that's not our problem. Dime. So they that's looked over dime. it with a fine tooth comb, fine -tooth all comb. their extra costs, and found out what was legit and what wasn't. Correct. Yeah, that was very good. So we split some time with them, yeah. we came to an agreement with them, and this is the final figure. So it's worked out pretty well. That saved us some money. Yeah, she's done a great job for us. It's expensive, but she's done a great job. She's not cheap. <laughs> do we want to do these tonight or do we want to wait? No, we can probably should wait till Stan, Stan is, is here. here. Yeah. There's I have some, some three quotes for too. Yeah, on these boring things for this uh, mm -hmm. town. Um, the highway rush? The highway this rush. Soil testing. Uh, I, got a, I had a uh, meeting today with the uh, Robert Boyles, who is the um, head commissioner of the Wasse Fire District. Received a letter September 11th, 2012, from Wasake Fire District, Wasake, New York, dear Board of Fire Commissioners. At the 9 12 2012 meeting of the Wasake Fire Company, a discussion was held concerning the Wasake Fire Company's ability to, to, to provide adequate staffing for the ambulance. While no decision was reached regarding the Wasake Fire Company's obligation and commitment to the rescue squad, one of the options which was discussed focused on the manning of the ambulance and its transportation of patients. Should the fire company decide is unable to man the ambulance and transfer patients, the fire district's purchase of a new ambulance may, be, may not be prevalent. Accordingly, the fire department suggests the fire district to suspend pursuing the purchase of a new ambulance until the fire company makes a determination concerning the viability of the fire company's ability to provide emergency medical service to the Wasake Fire District. Thank you, Fire Medically, John P. Kelleher, President of the Wasake Fire Company. Uh, basically, what's happening is that there's, there's not enough staff to run their ambulance. So we are trying to set up a meetings now with the Wasake Fire Commissions, Wasake Fire Department, Town of Amenia Fire Districts, uh, Amenia Fire Department, the county, and so on and so forth to see where we move from here. But it looks like we're looking at a paid rescue service for the Wasake Fire District. So we're going to start those discussions here shortly as to how we proceed and what the costs are going to be and so on and so forth. Mm. They are, all are now at this point running the uh, Northern Dutchess with their, with their um, calls, I believe, all sim simultaneously now. So. But I don't know what the cost, and they had no clue as to what the costs are going to be. Would this be a town? <coughs> this would be a cost that the town would absorb if the town provided the ambulance services. I understand it wouldn't come out of the fire district's budget; it would come out of the town budget. No, it would be billed to the fire district. The ambulance service. Correct. There's hired. two ways you can do it. The fire district can do it. Mm -hmm. You can. You can can do it within their own right. budget. The town can form a new ambulance district within the town, town-wide, okay. and then everyone would pay a fee. To maintain To this. maintain. Okay, so there's two ways of so going a, with this. There's a couple ways you can okay. do it. Okay, okay. So that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to, and it, you know, if the, some of the board members want to start in these meetings, that's fine with me too. You know, it's obviously going to be complicated. Yeah, we had, there were meetings a few years yep. ago through um, a consortium of towns. Mm -hmm in Pine Plains that I attended. I've been, I've had a few meetings with them already, but it's just sort of casual, so on and so forth, nothing that's uh, 
where we are with them. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, it's budget time. Yeah. But when do you want to start having your meetings? Well, the tentative is due next Thursday. Right. That'll be done. And then we need to schedule meetings after that. It's up to you whenever you want to do it. A uh, couple nights, three, four nights. One day, if you want to do it in a day. I could do Saturday the 29th. We could put in some time. Um, I won't be here. I'll be out of town, too, okay. that day. Um, I could do Monday, next Monday, the 17th. After work, I can do. Do that. you have the tentative ready? Uh, I can't do that. Okay. I could do it 17th. I, I, I'm not available. What time would we have it? After work, you said, <coughs> and you still couldn't do it, CJ. I no, I'm oh. meeting at five, okay. so I wouldn't be. At, I could get here at eight o'clock if you oh. need it at eight o'clock. <laughs> Probably not. What about the 18th? I, Tuesday the 18th? Yeah, Tuesday the 18th, that I could be here. All right, I would start with Stanley. I think that's the biggest I one could, at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. I could How, do what that. time do you want to start? I'd I rather start early. I could probably be here by 5. That works for me. Yeah. On the 18th? On yeah. the 18th? We'll start, and then I, you know, I'll have uh, the secretary send out the emails to everybody else and see what kind of schedules we can get from everybody. And we need to publish it, too. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, is someone going to be in charge of getting that published? Because we're we don't have that much time. What's uh, the date Patty, today? Can you get that? Is, is this just a <coughs> meeting for the budget? Yes. Oh, okay. no, you don't need. All to you have to do is just publish it. It's just a special meeting. It just fax it out. You send a notice no, to the just, paper. Just right. Right. Okay. Right. You're so it's a public hours hearing. Ahead. Right. What but it doesn't saying? have to be. It doesn't have to appear in the paper. It's up to the paper right. whether or not. They. Just allow but it should go out know. tomorrow, I would think. Can you know? Well, you're not here tomorrow. Um, um, yeah, you're right. It needs to go out tomorrow. So uh, nobody's here tomorrow. Uh, We're closed on Friday. How about Wednesday? Can't wait. Or I'm no good for Wednesday. I'm booked up pretty much. Friday. All. Uh, well. Oh, a whole week's gone. So I just said, we just have to call the newspaper until we have a public meeting? You, you send them the agenda. Yeah, but it's got to be 72 hours. Yeah. Do, you have, I haven't heard of do you have an agenda? I looked up the law. Can we just What's that? The 72 hours. I can call them. It's, it's, you're, you're right. You're oh, sorry. absolutely right. But, um, we could have had that meeting. It's not a bad idea to, right. to keep yeah. that. But in any case, we need to get some sort of a notice. Can Correct. we just... Get that done and get to, get it to the paper. Well, who's going to do it? Everybody's closed. It's Friday. Would you like me to come in on Friday and do that? Well, as town clerk, don't you? I mean, you have to as do this. Town she clerk. doesn't do. It. No? no. No. Oh. Well, if you give me the information, is the agenda yeah. I could. Um, yeah. Make, can you do a force. I can. Yes. I can. I can get it. I can get it out. There's no need for an attorney to write no, a no, notice. Easy. Okay. To our I just think we need to move forward on yeah. this so we have enough time to work. So I will so notify Millerton News yeah. and the Poughkeepsie Journal and the in Millbrook Independent, the three of them. And can you post something on the yeah, door here tomorrow? That's fine. And all you have to do is send a, you know, a notice. Notice of special yeah. meeting. So what are we meeting? The 17th? 18th. 18th? Tuesday. 5 o'clock. I'll post it on the door tonight. 5 o'clock. 5 p.m. 5 o'clock. Okay. Not to the highway? Yeah, highway. Okay. But you don't have a schedule yet as to who's going to meet? Just the highway department. Just the highway? Yeah. Is he for sure available or should we just make it a budget meeting and not specify? We'll be fine with him. I think it'll be fine. <coughs> That's all I've got. Town board comments? Um, I would just like to say S Smithfield Church has uh, Kent Tridal concert.
coming up on Saturday, 4 o'clock, and it's uh, Kent Tridel who uh, directs the oratorio at Carnegie Hall, and uh, there'll be the, the first violin and a cello. Uh, they'll be playing the historic organ as well as the Steinway piano. And at the same time, we're having a photography exhibit um, from Housatonic Camera Club. Their task back in April, and I've arranged this, with, they've been working all summer on this, to take pictures of area, all the area in Smithfield Valley and the surrounds. They were given roads as uh, benchmarks as to where, how far they could go. So there's, there are 30 stunning photographs of the whole area that will be on display and uh, for purchase as well. Uh, the concert starts at 4 o'clock. The exhibition opens at 4 o'clock. There's a reception at 5.15 for the concert members and also for the camera club and the public. So we welcome everyone to come to that. What's the date again? I'm sorry. Saturday, Saturday, the 15th at 4 o'clock. And that's all I have. Uh, the Amenia Fire Company will have their first pancake breakfast of the season on Sunday, September 16th from 7.30 to 11. Please come out and support your local firemen. This is a fundraiser for them. <coughs> uh, Indian Rock Schoolhouse will hold its annual Community Day on Saturday, September 15th from 10 to 3. This year's theme is Old Time Arts and Crafts. The Amenia Lions Club Walkathon for Juvenile Diabetes Registration starts at 8.30. The walk starts at 9. Other event events include the Amenia Lions Club Chicken Barbecue, Bake Sales, a book signing by local authors including Betsy Strauss, editor of Reed's Early History of Amenia, Harlem Valley Chamber of Commerce Pie Baking Contest. Pies should be delivered between 10 and 10.30 a.m. <clears throat> Business vendors, Amenia Fire Company, games, demonstrations of basket weaving and spinning, beanbag toss, Boy Scouts Troop 29, Cheryl's Critters, Eastern New York Holstein Club, and live music by Corey Bush and friends. There will be a giant raffle. Tickets are a dollar each or six for five. Indian Rock Schoolhouse is located at 25 Mygat Road in Amenia. For more information, go to indianrockschoolhouse.org. Um, Community Day is free, uh, open to all uh, the residents of Amenia and Wasik, and we would like to see everyone come and uh, enjoy the day. Should we schedule some other days for budget workshops while we're here? Yeah, but I'm going to reach out to the other um, the groups and find out what days oh. are available for them, which, which are good for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would think, like, Charlotte Murphy, I know, right. you know, the library, they always like to know ahead of time. I would think that would give them opportunity to... Right, so if Monday if we can come up with a schedule with everybody... Yeah, I think we what, should. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then why don't you shoot me your schedule? Okay. We'll book it for you. <laughs> <coughs> So the uh, Amenia Free Dance Program begins on Saturday, September 29th. We uh, distributed the flyers to the school and are getting good sign-ups. It'll be on Saturdays, 9.30 to 11 is second through third grade, 11 to 12.30 is fourth through sixth grade, 1 to 2.30 is seventh grade through high school, and we do have some adults interested as well. So we'll accommodate, really, a, a wide variety of people in Amenia, and it's going to be held right here in uh, the classroom on the second floor on Saturdays, and it starts September 29th that we'll have a final recital. Uh, we will not need the two um, uh, assistants that we had in the past, so I went ahead and said one would be fine, but we upped her pay a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's well within our budget since we're losing one of them from 750 to 800. And so I think that we're going to be well under a budget having it here, which is a, a nice option for people. We have to start an auditorium first. And we, we're going to start in the auditorium. I wondered if it was okay if we had volunteers to paint. You have the paint, right? If we were able to paint that building before the September 29th with that, that classroom would that work yeah you just need a coat of paint to put right. all we have to do is put the floor downstairs put the floor downstairs in the uh, that room and that we can sign off with the school district 
we're close. But they don't just want us in these rooms until we're done. So we're going to stay in the auditorium for the first couple of times, is that yeah. right? Right. So it's more than a coat of paint. It's putting down a floor? They're going to use the floor, the room downstairs and release these rooms. You're not putting down a floor in the auditorium. The, no, no. They're putting no. down the floor in the art room, the that, art the, room. that the school is going to uh, have upstairs. as their and room then here. And we get access Correct. to the upstairs room. Right. Yes. So it's I all see. been painted. Johnny finished the painting, I think, today. That's done. Oh, okay. So uh, okay. we just have to put a floor down, waiting for some prices. We had contractors in here the other day. We were just waiting for some contractor prices to go through and knock the floor off, and that's it. We're done. Okay. And then we'll have a CAC meeting, or not, sorry, I'm not sure if we're having CAC, but we will have an enhancement committee meeting on Wednesday, September 19th at 5.30 here at Town Hall. And we'll hopefully have a lovely report. Uh, it sounds like we have some good things happening in Amenia. And I think Nina Peak is working on putting our design guidelines, Hamlet design guidelines, into a format that would be acceptable for our town code, adopting that into the town code. Um, that would certainly be in addition to all the other guidelines that we're currently under, the Greenway guidelines, the county. Uh, it, it wouldn't eliminate it. It would just be yet another planning document for the town to consider. Um, then I was, let's see, I think I've got everything I was going to do, I would like to know where we're at with the Mechanic Street. I've had an awful lot of um, conversations back to me about where we're at. It sounds like we're having our Pete Sotero come and take a look Pete with Pete Sotero was there the other day. He sent a letter today, but I didn't have a chance to read it. It just said he, that he was going to bring the engineer right. back. There is another letter that came today from Pete, was delivered today, yeah. but it was just delivered six o'clock or five o'clock, whatever, the, well, four o'clock, whatever time the mail came. And I wasn't here this afternoon, so I didn't bring it up. I'll yes. submit, I'll, I'll give it to the board tomorrow, uh, Monday. Okay. Or I'll, I'll have copies made and put it out. Okay, but I would like to resolve what we're doing on Mechanic Street right. as soon as possible, because I know it's an issue that is just taking on a life of its own, and we need to make a decision about where to put the no parking. You know, there's clearly, and that intersection is uh, needs uh, to be addressed with some no parking signs, and I think Stan needs an approval from the town board to move forward. Yeah. He got a letter also today, okay. so from Pete. <coughs> the only other thing I have to announce is that Lana uh, Angwin has announced her retirement. Mm -hmm. She will be retiring November 15th, um, so we will have a position open within the town. Uh, she's been here. I don't know how many years has she been here. Forever. Over 22. I, it's definitely in the high in the 20s. And she's done. She'll be greatly, greatly missed. There's no question. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I just wanted to. I was at Target the other day, and I see Patty sitting here, meeting after meeting, with a pile of tapes, um, a video or a digital voice recorder. They're on sale for. Eighteen dollars. They're normally sixty dollars. I bought I bought one for myself, but if the town board's interested, I'd like permission to go buy another one to for twenty five for, to give yeah. the town clerk. Uh, so <laughs> that we can, we can get away from sweet. using so tapes. So 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 I gotta write that down. How yeah. sweet is it? Three hours. That'll be recorded. This is uh, eight hundred hours. That'll get us through. Yeah. And it comes with the software you need. So uh, I sounds know. good. So if Price the board's right. okay with that, I'm going to go over and buy another one. Need five tomorrow. prices. I'll okay. make a motion that we buy the digital recorder. <laughs> Wait a minute, you need the batteries too. Don't forget that. We need a resolution. <laughs> we need a small resolution. <laughs> Drawn up by the attorney. Has uh, anybody got uh, that it? Oh, and then the other thing is, uh, this has come up before, Mid-Hudson uh, Sustainability Plan. There was a call for projects, that the specific municipal projects to include in this regional plan, I submitted four projects, three from the town of Amenia, one for the village of Millerton, because there's really no one there representing Northeastern, or Duchess at all, really, but especially Northeastern Duchess. Uh, so I just thought I'd provide that update. So where are the sites, DDSO? Uh, so the DDSO, uh, Janet Reagan prepared a draft of uh, wastewater. So that was included as a project, a potential future project, because there's a big, 
it's recognized that most of Duchess and a lot of other areas in the region do not have wastewater, and uh, this plan is supposed to lead to potential future studies that, or grant opportunities for projects included. Uh, DDSO site, not for any specific reuse, but that it is a potential redevelopment site in the future, depending on what ends up happening with it. Uh, the rail trail extension into Wasaic, and then for Millerton, I did a rail trail extension uh, north from where it currently ends, because I thought that would make sense. Doesn't so those were the four projects I submitted. Thank you. And if I had more time, I would have, I'm sure we could have come up with many more, but those were some that I, there was I would just like to mention, too, the, the wastewater that came up as one of the comments tonight. That meeting on the 24th is not confined to people who would be in the district. It, it's open to anyone in the town who wants to know more about it. And it's not a done deal. We need input, and we are considering anything that anyone has to say at that meeting. It's very important, so we welcome anyone to come to that meeting. So, thank you. Yeah. I thought you mentioned it earlier. So That's it? No. I make a motion yes. we adjourn the meeting. Before. Before.